Hello everyone, welcome back to our Elasticsearch tutorial series. In previous two videos, if you followed them, you probably know that we showed two different ways how we can create a, an index. And after we have done that, we did not address how we can recreate it. So as a beginning or as an intro to this video, we are going to just demonstrate how we can recreate the index. And then after we are done with that, we are going to actually build some query. We're going to talk about the query later on. So let's just take a look at uh, what we need to do to actually recreate an index. I have already implemented this. And as you can probably remember, we have this list of our indices where we have the vehicle index. So we're going to be just working with it, but it should work for all other indexes. Um, except uh, maybe if you don't have a mappings, then you might have a problem with that. So you need to take care that you have a mappings file for the indices that you are recreating. Basically what I have uh, done here is I've extracted all of the things that we had here and put them in this uh, new method. And it has also this flag delete existing, meaning that should the existing index be deleted or not. As you can see on the post construct, so where we actually create our index for the first time when you start your application, if we find it, we do not want to delete it. This is because um, we just don't want to do that because if you would start your application every time, you would lose all of the data from the Elasticsearch because index would get uh, recreated. So that's not a nice thing to do. What we want is we want to have a manual option so we can trigger it whenever we want uh, via, for example, a HTTP request to recreate a certain index. So that's something that we use this flag for. The rest here stay the same. We are lo loading the settings and we are iterating through our indices. Also making this uh, index exist um, request. And if it does exist, and if this flag is set, um, then we only want to delete it in this case. If it's not set, we just continue. Uh, so if the index exists, perfect, we don't want to recreate it. In the case where index does not exist, um, we are going to be recreating it. So we are going to go here and we're going to use this create index request uh, to create it. We're going to set our settings. We're going to uh, load our mappings if we can find them and we are going to create an index. And that's pretty much it. Here we just have a method to load the mappings. And if you see this um, method is called from the index controller. So we have a new post mapping slash recreate with uh, this flag true. So we want to delete an index. This means that all of the data that we have in an index will be deleted. This is useful, for example, when we would now extend our um, so if we go to resources to mappings, if we extend our vehicle JSON, for example, we add a new field or something. This is the case where you would like to recreate this index. And keep in mind that in the real life uh, situation, you would also need to reload the data from the database and re-index it so that you have that data now. Perfect. Now that we are done with this, uh, we are going to be moving on to the second part of our uh, video. So of this tutorial, and that would be actually building a query. We're going to be doing a match query. So a match query is your basically go to query when uh, you want to do some search on the text values on the, for example, dates and stuff like this. So this is something that we're going to take a look at um, how we can implement it. And we're going to be explaining some things um, as we go along the way. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create some kind of a DTO. So this is something that our front end or our uh, rest client is going to send in and um, start the search. Um, this DTO will have uh, two properties. So we're going to have a list of fields and we're going to have a search term. So a list of field fields would indicate um, properties inside of your um, document that you want to search upon. For example, if we go to a vehicle, so this is our document in Elasticsearch. It has two fields. It has an ID and a number. And in this list that we are going to be sending from the, so with this DTO, we are going to um, set, for example, just a number. And then the search would just look at the number field. It wouldn't uh, care about what's set on the ID. So uh, let's just add this DTO probably in some new package because we don't have any details. Maybe let's create a package called search and uh, add it there. And here it is. As you can see, it looks uh, quite simple. So we have this search request uh, DTO uh, class contained in this search uh, package. 
and we have two properties fields which is a list of strings and we have a search term which is just a string okay now that we are uh, done with that we want to create um, this query so this is the next thing that we will go to um, we'll create some maybe some util class we can create it for um, searching and there we are going to take a look at how we can build a query so uh, let's create a new package here um, let's maybe call it uh, utils and inside of this uh, let's create a search util So inside of this uh, search util class, we are going to put all of our methods that are related to search. So the next one is actually building this query. So let's uh, take a look at how we can do that. Perfect. Now let's take a look at what we have here. We have implemented a new method to get the query builder. To this method, we are passing our search request DTO, which should contain our fields and our search term. And then we are just doing some checks on it. We're checking if it's null and we're also checking if the fields are empty. If um, either of this true is we are just returning. And then uh, after we are done with that, we go to the fun part. So if we have more than one field, um, we want to use something called multi-match query. Basically, this means that we are just working with multiple fields and not a single one. So instead of a match query, we have a multi-match query. Um, to it, um, to build it, actually, it's quite simple. We are using this query builders uh, to use this multi-match query uh, method. And there we are passing our search term. We are saying that this uh, the type of this multi-match query is the cross field ones and the operator is and so by default this uh, multi-match or match query will have an operator or meaning that um, if you search with the term um, for example john wick uh, you would um, care about th uh, those hits on the in the documents which have either of these terms so either john or wick so you could have a person named john blah blah and that would be a hit or you could also have a person named blah blah week and that would be a hit but if you use and that means that only a person that has john wick uh, in one of the fields doesn't matter uh, has this hit and that's uh, why we're sticking with and in this case i mean if you want to you can just also switch it to or and the next thing is we want to use the query builder so this one here uh, to apply it uh, to apply uh, fields that we are going to be executing the search on and we're just iterating through all of our fields that we are passing in our DTO. Now the next thing is what if we have only one field it's actually quite simple we're just using the find first uh, in the stream API and uh, we are mapping uh, the field so we are using this query builders again to do the match query instead of a multi-match because now we have just one field again field search term operator and or else we just return null and that's pretty much it so the next thing that we want to do is we want to build a search request so the search request that will be actually sent to Elasticsearch so let's take a look at how we can do that okay now we are done we have implemented the method to build our search request to this method we are passing in our index so an index name and again the search request DTO the search request DTO is actually used to get this query builder, so the method that we built previously, and the index name is used to, to set it on the search request so that you know which index you are searching. And um, the additional thing that we have to build is this um, uh, search request source, and we're using the search request um, or search source builder. And uh, with this builder, you just need to apply the post filter, which is actually um, getting all of the data from the query builder that we just uh, built previously. Then we build our request, we set the source, uh, which is this builder, and we just return the request. And that's it. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to go, for example, to the vehicle service and see how we can um, yeah, do a search. So here it is. This is what we have until now. We have implemented our search method to it. We are, be, we are going to be passing our DTO, so our search request DTO, and we are um, creating our search request. So we saw how we can build one. And with the search request, we are just doing check if we actually built it. If it's null, we just want to log an error and return an empty list. So here we are looking for a list of vehicles. And then we actually try to perform the search using our client as before um, to execute the search command. 
we are passing in the search request and the request options are at default. And then and this will return us this search response. From the search response, we can get um, so-called hits. So these are basically um, the documents as JSON. So if you uh, iterate through all of the search hits that we have, you can map them. So you can take a hit as a so the source of the hit is basically the documents that you have. So the entity that you want to return, in our case, a vehicle. And if you get it as a string and use the mapper, the one that we used before, um, to read the value, you can actually convert it to this vehicle class and then just add it to this list and return it. And basically this is it. This is how we um, uh, create this. Now the, all the only thing that's left is actually to extend our vehicle controller to add an endpoint, which can uh, trigger this search and to which we are passing in the search request detail. So um, let's extend it. So here's our uh, method. It's actually quite simple. We have the post mapping on the slash search endpoint. And this method is returning a list of vehicles. And to it, we are passing the search request detail as a request body. And we are just calling the, ser the service, uh, so the search method that we just took a look. So with this being done, um, let's fire up our Elasticsearch. Let's jump to Postman and execute some requests. So here we are in our Postman. We are making a post request at localhost 8080 slash API slash vehicle slash search. So this is our new endpoint. This is our DTO that we are sending. So we have the fields, which is an array of uh, strings. In our case, we're just looking at a number um, field and we have the search term. So what are we searching for? If I execute this, I'm searching on fields, which are called number, and my search term is vehicle. And this is uh, what I got back. So I got back an array of some elements. There are uh, three of them. So we have vehicle one, so ID one, we have a vehicle two, ID two, and we have vehicle 12, ID 12. So if we take a look at uh, this, so we copy vehicle 12 and execute that search. So we are just searching for vehicle 12, send it and we get it back. So it just finds this. If we're just searching for vehicle one, we get that back. If we're just searching for vehicle, we get everything back. And if I change this to ID and then send vehicle, I doesn't find it because we don't have a vehicle with an ID. Um, vehicle. But if we search with one, it finds the vehicle with ID one. And if we search with 12, it finds a vehicle with ID 12. But if we would search with uh, 12, whatever, so we have two terms, it does not find it. If we would use that um, or logic, in this case, this would be a hit for the vehicle 12, and it should find it. So um, this is everything for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, do let me know and I will try to answer them in the comments. And um, this would be everything. Yeah. So I will see you in the next one.